Well, the ABC's election analyst, Anthony Green, joins me now from the telly room in Darwin. Anthony Green, the minority Labor government seeking a fourth term in office. How finely poised is this election? <coughs> Well, we're going to this election with uh, the Labor Party with 12 seats, the country Liberals with 12, and one independent holding the balance of power. Um, the Labor Party lost the seat since the last election when Alison Anderson defected to the country Liberals. And that means that Labor effectively, if it wants to stay in government, has to hold all 12 seats and, and negotiate with the independent. If the CLP can pick up one seat, they're in government. And so that's why everyone keeps calling it as a close election. It may not be. One of the peculiarities of Northern Territory elections, there is no opinion polling, so nobody's got a real, no one publicly has any real knowledge of what the result's going to be. And it seems that everybody just reverts to calling it too close to call. Um, we don't know what the result is, is because we haven't got any opinion polling. But I suspect the CLP just has to win one more seat. If they win one of the seats, where the uh, Labor Party has a retiring member, or they win one of the outback seats where they're putting a considerable effort in with Indigenous candidates, then the CLP will be in government. Well, I was going to ask you, where do you think the CLP's best chances are of picking up that seat? Well, Johnson and uh, traditionally Northern Territory electorates are decided in the northern suburbs of Darwin. Uh, there's about six seats there. And there's only 5,000 voters per electorate, so there's a huge sitting member factor. There's two seats, Johnson and Nightcliffe in the northern suburbs of Darwin. Uh, both sitting members are retiring for Labor, Jane Agard and Chris Burns. The CLP has a good chance of winning both of those simply because the sitting member factor has been removed from the equation. You've got Fanny Bay just slightly further to the south in Darwin. Labor won it by 78 votes at the last election when Claire Martin retired, the former Chief Minister. This time, the Labor member's been there for four years, Michael Gunner. He may have a chance of improving his position with a sitting member factor in his, in his favour. And down south, you've got seats like Stewart, Namajira, which are outback seats, where the CLP are putting a big effort in. Alison Anderson in Namajira, now she's a, a CLP candidate. And the country levels have put up best price in Stewart, who's very well known. So those outback seats are in play. Uh, and Daly, which surrounds Darwin, it's got a lot of peripheral areas, uh, people on the edge of the city living in sort of semi-rural reclusion. It's also got a big indigenous community. The turnout factor could be very important in a seat like Daly. Um, traditionally, there was a low turnout last time. There's been a fixed date this time. More people may be out there and voting. Of course, earlier this year, the Labor government in Queensland was swept away. Federal Labor has been doing fairly poorly when it comes to uh, opinion polling. Do you think Labor's chances of re-election in the Northern Territory have been weakened by those factors? Um, having the brand name Labor attached is something that doesn't help the Henderson government, which is why it's tended to call itself the Henderson team and make as little mention as possible of the brand name Labor. So certainly those federal factors will be something that's working against the, the, the Henderson government in trying to get re-elected. But in the end, um, I think local issues will determine the election. Um, the swing may vary from seat to seat. I think no doubt lots of people in Canberra will make draw some conclusions on the result if Labor loses and say it's all about the Gillard government. But of course if the Henderson government's re-elected, nobody's going to say it's anything to do with the uh, Gillard government. So I think the uh, context of the result may actually change the context of how people analyse the results.